American novelist Ta-Nehisi Coates published a non-fiction book in 2015 titled Between the World and Me. Coates wrote it as a letter to his son, who was a teenager at the time, explaining what he thought the emotions, meanings, and realities of being black in the U.S. were like. He begins by narrating how he was questioned on a TV program why he believed that looting and violence were the foundation of white American development. Coates saw the fundamental chasm in this question between the host and himself. American history is the answer, he declares. He claims that the narrative around American democracy and freedom has never included African Americans. After that, Coates looks at the idea of race. He claims that rather than being a biological or physiological difference, it is a social construct that arose from one group of people oppressing and taking advantage of another group. The formation of the groupings is based on beliefs rather than biological factors. Individuals who believe that they are white have a strong belief in their own moral superiority and righteousness and they ignore the thievery and violence that have really given them privilege and power because of this conviction. Referring to this made-up story as the dream, he exhorts his son to see the dream's deception and face the realities of his nation. Coates explains his decision to write to his son in his letter. The recent news coverage of African-American men and women who were assaulted or murdered by police officers has caused him to see his son's struggles. He wants to share his knowledge on this subject because he knows that his child may have some of the same concerns about what it means to be an African-American in America that he has had throughout his life. Coates talks about some of his most treasured childhood memories from Baltimore. Growing up in an educational system built on the dream, he was terrified of the crews that occupied the local streets. He believed that while the schools did not prepare African American students for success, they did provide a hazy promise of protection from the brutality of the streets. Like many others, they finally placed the blame for their failure on the young. After that, Coates talks about leaving Baltimore to attend Howard University. Malcolm X's writings had a profound effect on him, and he started to believe in his own dream, a romanticized narrative of African-American history that portrayed African-Americans as the real noble race of the past. But as time went on, he realized that this was simply another fiction, and his perspective on history became more complex. He wanted to see beyond mythology and perceive reality as it really exists. Coates met and fell in love with a few women while attending Howard, and each of them helped him see the full scope of the world. Kenyatta Matthews, the final woman he fell in love with, ended up becoming Samori's mother. Coates explains how the birth of Samori changed his perspective on his battle for existence into understanding the world not only for him, but also for his son. Reminding us that slavery was not that long ago and that its repercussions are still felt, he closes the first section of his letter. In the first paragraph of the second section of his letter, Coates describes being pulled over by Prince George's County Police. Even though African Americans made up the majority of the county's government, the cops had a history of using violence against African Americans. Coates was released, but not long after, Prince Jones, a friend from Howard University, was wrongfully killed by an officer with no accountability. Coates then goes on to explain how he and Kenyatta had relocated to New York City just before the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks. The fact that Ground Zero, the location of the collapsed World Trade Center towers, had originally been a slave market further isolated Coates from the collective grief of the city, especially in light of the recent death of Prince Jones. Coates had the chance to observe how those with privilege, those who do not constantly worry that one mistake may result in their death, acted while living in New York City. They often allowed their kids to take up the whole sidewalk with their toys and looked clearly intoxicated in public.
In one instance, a white lady shoved Samori out of the way with some force, and when Coates reacted angrily, her friend threatened to have Coates imprisoned. He notes that white children were brought up to feel in control of their surroundings and ties this feeling of privilege to the legacy of colonialism and slavery. Coates also talks about his reporting on a Chicago shooting as a journalist that claimed the life of a young African American youngster. Before turning himself in, the white man who had shot him, for playing loud music, enjoyed a relaxing evening at a hotel with his girlfriend. In addition, he was cleared because the jury accepted his false claim that he had spotted a shotgun in the boy's vehicle. In closing, Coates describes his experiences learning about and visiting Paris in this section of the letter. The idea that he was not a part of the French culture's traditions, laws, or history struck him. Coates felt liberated and had a fresh perspective on the world as a result of this experience of being an outsider in a foreign land. But he eventually comes to terms with the reality that he is African American and has to deal with the legacy of the brutal past and ongoing exploitation of African Americans in his own nation. The visit Coates made to Prince Jones's mother, Dr. Mabel Jones, is the subject of the letter's third section. She shared with Coates her early years, her determination to succeed and pursue a career in medicine, and her accomplishments as a leading radiologist at a renowned hospital. She also told him about the time she became aware of her own differences from white kids. She continued talking about Prince, mentioning how she had sent him to the finest private schools, how she had wanted him to attend Harvard but he had chosen Howard and how she had felt when she found out he had been shot and that his assailant would not face consequences. Her narrative brought Coates to tears. Following Prince's passing, Coates talks of going back to Howard. He was astounded by the beauty of African Americans and the amount they had contributed to the world despite receiving such terrible treatment as he saw the school's students and alumni celebrating. He reiterates the evil that comes with believing in the dream and explains how technological advancements have allowed dreamers to not only take and destroy African Americans but also to destroy the planet Earth. He understands that dreamers will ruin the Earth if they don't wake up. Coates urges Samori to keep fighting for knowledge and the truth, to work for his own independence, and to hold out faith that the dreamers will eventually awaken as he closes the letter. If you have any suggestions of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.